Greetings and welcome to tutorials and short videos of clinical eye openers. Those who are curious who is the general editor, I am speaking to you and presenting here my credentials. You are about to see a short clinical video. This series have the intent to present signs and signals so that clinicians can recognize patterns of childhood maldevelopment faster, more accurately, and frame their therapies accordingly. In these short presentations, we, for the most part, underscore what is the sign of interest, in this case hemihypertrophy or hemiasymmetry, what these signs may be in terms of signals once they are interpreted, in this case elevated risk for childhood neoplasia. In addition, there may be some question about pathogenesis. Many of experts will agree that hemihypertrophy is a disorder that has to be traced as far back as the first 14 days of life, that is blastopathy. The reason we selected this particular demonstration is that hemihypertrophy is a very important clinical sign and that very often is associated with characteristic concurrent anomalies, for instance, omphalocele and macroglossia, which is one well-known syndrome, also known as Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome. Hemihypertrophy as a sign is a signal of potentially higher risk for development of childhood neoplasia. That, of course, is obvious for neonatologists to pay attention as early as possible. In the following video, there are shown only a very few scenes. You would have to see the rest. And if you do, please try to make a mental list of the signs you note and compare them with those noted by experts included in the uh, companion presentation concerning this subject. Being asymmetric, as illustrated here, raises important consideration, namely that there may be an association with an elevated cancer risk during childhood, that the anomaly represents a blastopathy, and that is events during the first two weeks of life, thus the importance to check for other concurrent anomalies of this sort that it may be the result of an unequal division of the fertilized oocyte, morula and blastula, or of an unequal somatic genomic complement, 
of the light, right and left components of the early uh, creation of the embryo and that it is the result of a vascular imbalance. Least likely perhaps, but nonetheless worth consideration, is that one body half and the other represent conjoint monozygotic twins, <coughs> thus the same genomic complement, but in different proportions. This presentation offers an opportunity to underscore that all clinical examinations should include an assessment of symmetry, that is, size and proportions. Furthermore, it underscores, as done here, that the manifestations may be rather subtle, thus relying on comparisons of x-rays of the skeleton and other modes of imaging may be quite helpful. It is relevant then to remember in each instance that it may be a sign of a syndrome known as Beckwith-Wiedemann or macroglossia anomphalocele. If macroglossia anomphalocele may be apparently not evident, nonetheless there may be other signs of Beckwith-Wiedemann syndromes present thus worthwhile searching for. We come to the end of this short presentation and I invite you to look at the links below. These links will provide you access to far more information that I hope you will find relevant and until then I extend to you my best wishes and I hope that you will visit us again soon.